On the surface, this might look like any other school. But children at this environmental magnet school in Berkeley, California, are taking learning to a new level by stepping away from their desks and getting outside. Kids spend far too much time on screen time. And when you look at the Nintendo Wii, when you look at the Xbox, when you look at the uh, television and uh, computer, there's just so much screen time. And many kids come with a real deficit of creative play. The philosophy at Rosa Parks Elementary is to encourage students to explore their natural environment by weaving ecology, learning, and playing together. Sharon Danks is an environmental planner who's been working to transform asphalt lots into green schoolyards for 12 years. Her landscape architecture firm helped redesign Rosa Parks schoolyard to include more green spaces and natural play and learning areas. The schoolyard really becomes the place where children have the experiences that shape their childhood. And if all we're giving them in those experiences is asphalt and play structures and planned games, they're missing out on a huge spectrum of what used to be normal childhood development. Dinks also says green schoolyards allow teachers to easily incorporate nature into their curriculum. For third graders studying the water cycle, a trip to the pond just outside their classroom door provides a hands-on opportunity to learn about water quality and pollution. Green features at Rosa Parks are tucked into almost every corner. You can find solar panels, a fruit and vegetable garden, a series of boulders arranged in the shape of the school's pet snake, and wooded nooks where children can play among trees and logs. The amount of office discipline referrals from recess are significantly less here at Rosa Parks than at my former school. And I kind of wanted to know, wow, why, why is this happening? What's going on? What does is, what is recess look like here? Some research has shown that less bullying occurs at green schoolyards than at traditional schoolyards because more emphasis is put on creative play rather than sports. But Dank says that's not the only benefit. Green schoolyards are a place to educate tomorrow's voting citizens on how to manage their environment. If, if they don't understand how ecological systems function, then we can't expect them to be good stewards. It's definitely a movement that's expanding around the world. Over the last 12 years, I've, I've had a chance to visit about 200 schools in eight countries looking at um, the wide variety of, of green school year possibilities. And it seems those possibilities are endless. Danks has turned her travels and research into a new book called Asphalt to Ecosystems, which documents 150 green schoolyard projects from around the world. You can learn more about Danks' work in an interview at onearth.org. Erica Brecky for On Earth Magazine.